crack and it ain't no crack. And it really don't matter if you're white or black. I wanna take you there like the staple singers. Put something in the tank and I know that I can bring you. If you can't take the heat, get your ass out the kitchen. We on a mission. fans out there in the tubo sphere welcome to the one man sports red coming to you from the back seat of my cobra mustang i am your host will the alternative espn sports thrill celebrating the u-dubs second slam dunk championship winner in the nba all right so what are we doing here fusing together it's going to be our new baseline show up until the nba finals you know, the other playlist that I like to do, the real world, do it yourself, along with the one man sports rant about how you're going to get a fixer upper. Be prepared for a lot more fixer than upper, especially with regard to the interior, even in spaces that nobody else gets to see. All right, so Lee, if you'll just back that out, we'll zoom in on some areas that, uh, you know, I'm talking about. As you can see, we've got the body pretty much tweaked out, took care of the powertrain like any car guy should, up to 470 horsepower with another 135 to go, but thought my body shop guy was the fiberglass guy to handle the job. Eh, you know, so at the end of each sporting event, up until the NBA Finals, when this is no longer relevant, all of Terrence Ross, I'm going to be showing you updates through the process of accretion, how you add new fiberglass, to already existing fiberglass, tips and tricks on the interior. You're going to be learning as much as if you've ever watched every Home Improvement episode. Like Tim the Toolman Taylor would say, you want to get down to those nitty gritty car guy details, you're going to have to do it yourself. No one's ever going to take the time to do this. Like for example, I'm in the middle of a $2,000 interior restoration job without upholstery. And that's the one thing that was lacking in this car when I bought it. You know, beefed up the engine and the rear end transmission and all that, put on a new top. But the interior was, was really bad, and, and that's what I'm in the middle of now. Hey, just a reminder, the One Man Sports Rant is a show. All of the DMCA, Digital Millennium Copyright Act, it has to be done this way. That way, in doing a show, you get more than a one and two minute bit clip of sports highlights. So save the comments for the actual highlights we're bringing you, because frankly, you're getting way more for a pro bono sports show than you will anywhere else. They're not going to last long on the message board anyway. And as far as the promotional bid goes, give it a chance for a product that actually works. Even if the calendar says July and you're planning that fishing trip up north, but you plan on heading out at 6 in the morning, it'll work for you then too. All right. Roll graphics. On Twitter with the hashtag SCTop10. Have a great one. We'll see you again next month. <coughs> College Game Day, covered by State Farm. This is Game Day, covered by State Farm. I'm Chris Cotter, joined by Jimmy Dykes, Dan Dockage, and we're dancing. Not literally, I'm talking figuratively. If it was literally, you might turn the channel, or you might just keep it here just to see that. These two guys going at it. But we have had a great day of college basketball today, and really it accelerated this evening with upsets. Let's take a look at Harvard and New Mexico, a hot favorite, the Lobos. 
on many people's brackets. Tommy Amaker, though, in the Crimson, might have something to say about that. Second half, Laurent Rivard buries the three. He has 17 points. Harvard up four. And Jimmy, this is the Harvard team that New Mexico couldn't put away. Well, Harvard made shots. They got great shots. And New Mexico, defensively, they didn't guard the basketball in this game. The ball was always a problem. And they also overhelped and allowed the Parker to three-point shooting at D to get clean look. Open shots. You mentioned that. Siani Chambers hit the bucket there. Harvard took their largest lead of the night there. They cruise on it, hitting free throws down the stretch. 68-62. to 62. The Crimson get the win. Afterward, Tommy Amaker pleased to bring Harvard their first ever NCAA tournament win. What a sensational, gutsy effort by our team. I uh, thought we had to play an exceptional basketball game to uh, to win against an outstanding team. Uh, I think Steve has a terrific ball club. They've had a wonderful season. Uh, it was certainly uh, tough on them to, uh, this, this evening with uh, missing a lot of shots. I think he would probably be the first to say that. I think our defense was, uh, was outstanding. Uh, I thought our kids gave great effort on the defensive end, which is what we need to do. Uh, we couldn't keep them off the backboard as well, um, but I certainly thought our toughness and our courage uh, carried us through with the belief that we had with the opportunity in front of us. Tommy Amaker, by the way, no stranger to the NCAA tournament as a coach and a player, and as a coach, like Seton Hall to the Sweet 16 back in 2000. Well, I mentioned Harvard getting a first ever NCAA tournament win. In the process, they recorded the biggest upset win by seed in Ivy League history. The 14th seed of Crimson knock off the 3 seed New Mexico. Previous largest upset by seed was when 13th seed Princeton knocked off defending champ UCLA in 1996. We've dodged this bullet a lot this year uh, by having bad shooting nights and still being able to get wins, and we weren't able to dodge that bullet tonight. We really just didn't step up and make the big stops that we normally do, get the big rebounds, and then uh, we didn't come down and uh, even hit the big shots like we normally do. Uh, we weren't under the radar. People were picking us to do this and that, and um, I, I thought our focus was a little off, and I thought Harvard did a lot of things to take... Uh, advantage of that, and then we had a tough shooting night, and they didn't. Dan Dockic, uh, New Mexico, I know you were high on them. A lot of people were high on them coming in real hot, coming out of the Mountain West, that three seed, and then they just fell flat tonight. Yeah, first thing you have to do is say, boy, Harvard played a really good game. They moved the basketball around. They found open shooters from a New Mexico side of it. Steve Alford literally is going to throw up when he watches this film. Ball side defense was non-existent. Guys would actually drive towards a shooter and the man guarding the wing would jump up in the air. We saw that numerous times. You know a team's playing good defense when they can clog the lane and get the shooters, and New Mexico had neither. They didn't stop the basketball. They didn't keep it out of the lane. They didn't recover the shooters, and quite frankly, they didn't play hard. Cool is for the club. Cool is not for the NCAA tournament. And when you play cool, you get beat. Harvard played tough, New Mexico played cool, and Harvard got what they deserved, New Mexico got what they deserved. It's only the third team all year to shoot over 50% from the field against New Mexico. That's how good Harvard was offensively, and I talked about it earlier. I think New Mexico, they overhelped in this ball game way too many times. Dan was talking about it too. Chambers would drive the ball, it was a non-rim threat drive, wasn't driving to score, and they would collapse, open up uh, kickouts. They made 44% from three in this ballgame. Harvard did. You knew coming in, that's what they do. They're a 40% three-point shooting club. New Mexico wasn't ready to play, and Harvard punched them out of it. Chris, you can get hot as a defender, and what I mean by that is I know I have you. Like, you may beat me early, but I know eventually I have you. I don't need help, and I'm going to get a loose ball, and I'm going to cause difficulty for you. And when you do that, you clean up the backboard. Nobody has to help you. Rotations are solid. New Mexico never even, in my opinion, never even attempted to get after the basketball. You saw no hand pressure, no activity on the ball. You just saw what you saw in these highlights. Harvard, or excuse me, New Mexico backing off on balls. It was ridiculous. I mean, truthfully, that's, it's disappointing for their kids. But I have, as I say that, you have to give Harvard great credit because they played not out of their minds. They just played. Mm -hmm. And New Mexico didn't, and as I said, you get what you deserve in basketball. And it's great for Harvard alumni everywhere, including Jeremy Lin, who had this tweet after the Crimson's win. Yes, Harvard wins. How do you verbalize that? Yes, Harvard wins. I told you, 
three-point goggles bracket busters. Hashtag for Jeremy Lin. Of course, proud Harvard alumnus. So we, the three, seed and the four team, see we had an upset. Do we have an upset in the 116? Our boxing Jamal Galloway, not very tall, but extremely athletic and confident on the offensive end. Garland had 10 in the first half. Wednesday was actually... And here he gets it to Galloway. Oh, threw it away. Use him. Two on one. Price. Oh, come on. What a shame Stolen. this. Oh, come on. You can know. I know. Everybody in the house likes it, but Vern Lundquist is sending it in. Woo! A high flyer. Oh, there's the sixth. Wham. That's not, that was Tory. I beg your pardon. And it was Shaq. Shaq was a good nice pass by Johnson. Oh, and the hammer. Delivery. He's got the pose down. And if I could do that, I would pose as well. <laughs> well, they got within three. Missed an open three, and then you've got Stephens at the opposite end. talking no 30 second clip either or a buck 14 or even a buck 59 you know the beauty of doing a show is you end up with a significantly still slight and brief longer highlight reel than all those other ones that I just mentioned that are all over YouTube that's not the goal of this show here now how is that possible it's a little thing called the DCMA which we adhere to strictly around here the Digital Copyright Millennium Act is the key tenets were hashed out as it pertains to YouTube more than ever really came about because of the Napsters of the world. Through the WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization. And these are the fair use standard, derivatives, minimal use, no money exchange in hands because the OMSR is a pro bono production. So I understand if a show's not your cup of tea, you can always fast forward on average eight minutes, you know, thereabouts. We try to do at least six minutes worth of highlights. There. So you can go, Bleh. do I have anybody's attention at this point? A minute 43. Plus the intro, so that's my two minutes. I guess I'm up. I, I may not be talking to him, I'm not sure. I'm not dissing you guys watching now. I'm talking about how it was in the past. All right, so you heard from uh, Molly Crew. It's going to be our lead into for a while. And are introduced by our Pi Kappa Alpha, House Sweethearts, U of U Chapter, Alpha Tau. Giving you props. So, uh, yeah, all of these things being said, one more very important thing, this show is copyrighted to the OMSR with brief video highlights courtesy to CBS, NBC, ABC, ESPN, Pac-12 Networks, and or any of their affiliates. The OMSR does not own these video highlights, but does own all the other original content and the overall concept herein, thereof, therefore, most rights reserved. Now, one more note, to change it up a little bit. All images, not of... OMSR Providence were obtained through the public.